If you're anything like me, you've been dealing with mail clutter for far too long and you've just had enough. I wanna share with you nine tips that I used to clear out all of those ugly piles of papers once and for all. Tip number one is honestly just to get a filing system. For me, I got a three drawer filing system and that works great. We're a family of five. It's able to house everything that I need it to, but that was the only thing that allowed me to actually organize everything in a way that I had a place to put everything once I was done going through it. So tip number one is to get a filing system of some sort. Now that could be different for different people, but find something that is gonna work for you and your family. Think about all of the categories that you're gonna to have to put into it and do something like that. You also have an option of doing more things digitally or electronically, and that is also another option. So I'll just have one main category, such as my dog Cooper, and then in there I'll have separate envelopes for vet visits, um, dog license, things like that to make the categories a little bit smaller and easier to manage. Tip number two is to purge your paper. You wanna go through all of the areas in your house, all the drawers, all the cabinets, all the different rooms that you might house different papers, and really put them all together and go through them and come up with a system for filing, shredding, or recycling. It's that simple. Um, if you are somebody who doesn't wanna do it all in one day, like I said, this has taken me a good year to finally get down once and for all. I didn't do it all in one day. I would go through a couple drawers one day, a different place another day, and just slowly build and go through those different categories and get rid of a lot of stuff. A lot of it was just trash and things I no longer needed, so that made it much easier. Just remember, it is very important to shred any kind of information that has your personal information on it, so it's not just out there for anybody to take. Tip number three is to transfer as much as you can to online. Um, it would greatly reduce the amount of mail coming into your house going forward if you could just set up online bill pay for utilities, credit cards, bank statements, all of that sort of thing can be done online. So it would just greatly reduce the amount of paperwork actually coming in on a daily basis, making it a lot more easier to manage. Going along with that is just setting up online bill pay. So one, you know that things are always getting paid on time and then also you're not having all of those bills come in and pile up and it's less that you have to go through later on. Tip number four is to figure out a system that's gonna work for you on a daily basis. So when I come in my front door, I have my recycling bin right there along with my shredder and I am immediately able to recycle what I have to and um, shred the other stuff that I know is just junk mail and I don't need. I'm able to do that immediately so it never even gets to being put in a pile or into the next category that we're gonna talk about. Tip number five is to create a take action system. So for me, it was just a small organizer that I keep along with my recycling bin and my shredder, I keep it in the same place. So when I'm coming in, I will either shred, recycle, or put into my take action bin. Now for me, what I had to do was schedule a day each week um, to actually go through that stuff and look at it, deal with it, and then take the appropriate steps to get rid of it so I could clear out the paper portion of it. I know for me personally, it would be super easy to just kind of start piling everything into that organizer and then that would just become a huge mess on its own. So I work different days during the week. What I've done is gone through and each week I just set aside a day. It only takes a few minutes to go through and clear that out for the next week. You may be somebody who wants to do it every two weeks. You just have to find a system that works for you, but I would definitely recommend going through it on a regular basis and dealing with what you need to deal with. And then once you get more used to it, it'll become second nature. Tip number six is to create a, create a plan for your coupons. For me, I'll get store coupons that I wanna use and I used to just keep them in piles on our kitchen counter. That's where most of our mail lived for a very long time, um, three or four large piles and they would always get lost. So I'd be out at the store and I would think, oh, I had a coupon for this store, but I didn't have it with me. And then by the next time I went to that store, it was either expired or I never even thought to look for it. And then when I was going through that mail, I would find it and have to throw it away. So now what I do is I take the coupon booklets or a coupon for a particular store, I put it right into my pocketbook and then I keep something in my car that I put those in. That way, Every time I'm out, I'll have it available to me when I'm at the store. 
Number seven is to organize your receipts. So for us, we have a rental property. We like to keep all of our receipts throughout the year for anything that we've purchased for that property. That way we can use it on our taxes. Um, and I keep a specific file in there for each year. And every time we buy something, I just come home and I put the receipt in that filing bin so I know exactly where it is at all times. It may also be um, if you're somebody who is out buying gifts for maybe your children or a family member and you're not sure if they're gonna like it, you wanna have that receipt handy. That way, if you need to return that item or if it breaks and you have to return it, you'll know exactly where to look for the receipt. In the past, I used to just keep them all in my pocketbook and they would get lost in there and I would go through my pocketbook to clear it out and then I would just end up throwing them away. So it wasn't very useful and I find that this system works really well for me. Tip number eight is to just mark everything in your phone calendar or a, a paper calendar of any kind of events that you have coming up. So flyers that are coming in the mail, maybe your kids are bringing home of different events that are happening coming up. Um, now I just mark that immediately into my phone exactly where it's gonna be, what time it's gonna be, and then I can get rid of the paper and end up just sitting in a pile somewhere. All right, so what about some of those other things, those random items that are just taking up space those that aren't in those specific categories. Things like magazines, um, appliance manuals, old cards, kids artwork. What about those things? What do I do with those? So I actually have always had a problem with magazines. I don't know what it is. I love them. I love getting them. I love keeping them. I have a really hard time getting rid of them. So I have had to learn over these past few years really how to let them go um, and I've actually unsubscribed from the majority of them. If they're to do with cooking or baking only, I will tend to keep those. But the other things that I used to get, I'm really not interested any I'm really not interested anymore in those anyways. So for me, um, you can recycle them, you can donate them. But for me, I would have a problem putting them all in a bin to donate because I wouldn't always get to go to donate them on a timely manner, in a timely manner. So I would be tempted to then look through them and go, well, maybe I want to keep that one. So now what I do is I just immediately, whatever ones are still coming in, I will glance through them really quickly. If there's really something in there that I want to go back to later, um, I will keep it. But usually I am ready to just put it in the recycle bin and get it outside so hopefully it'll rain and I don't have a chance to actually go back and look at them. Things like old cards. Um, unless it is something special from, you know, our children or my husband or something like that, I am okay just recycling those as well. My husband and I each have our own file in the filing system that we keep all of our cards from our kids. That way we can keep those. Those are very special to us, of course but anything else I'm okay with just letting go. I would say for most appliance manuals, you don't really have to keep those. Everything is online. If you're just getting a new appliance, once you've registered the product, I would say it was okay to let the manual go. And if you need to look up something later, it's okay to look online. Or if you're not comfortable with that, maybe you want to put it in your filing cabinet under under a special category of manuals and then you know keep it for six months or a year and then go back and declutter that later on but um, for the most part I think most things can just go in the trash. Now kids art of course is always a tough one because we want to keep everything that they're bringing home but it's just not possible. Um, I think if most of us did that we wouldn't have anywhere to live we would just be sleeping on artwork so I've always had a hard time letting go of some of their artwork, but what I do now is I keep it in a particular place in the kitchen, and then we go through that and I will have a special bin for each child that we keep a certain amount of items per year in. It can't be a huge bin because then I'll just keep stuffing it full of things, but um, a good size bin that I feel comfortable years worth of artwork in. Now there are another there are some other really great options out there. You can um, do scrapbooking with some of the art pieces. You can hang them in your house in a specific room or a, you know, if you have a playroom or the child's room or you wanna just showcase that art, you can just hang up certain pieces throughout the week and then change those every week and just get rid of them and only keep the ones that you really want to keep. You can also upload them to platforms like Google Drive or Dropbox, and then you'll be able to keep those items for, for a longer period of time as well. 
So for me, I realized that it all just accumulates so fast. And if I didn't have specific measures in place to deal with it, I was going to be drowning in paperwork for the rest of my life. So I really just wanted to come up with different ways to manage it once and for all that were easy to maintain and go through. So the filing cabinet, what I'm going to do is go through that once a year, probably in January every year, and really just declutter out some of those things. We're not going to need everything forever. So there are definitely going to be things that we can let go of each year and make, make space for the new stuff that we have coming in. And here is the corner that used to house all of our papers. Like I said, there used to be two to three piles of papers on here at all times. Now it is always clear. I get to use that space for whatever I want and I actually love it so much. So I really just hope that this video has helped you get some new tips to manage your paper clutter once and for all and take your house back. I will see you next week for the next video. Take care, bye.